I've completed the trimming around the area here. You can see all these little pieces that I've taken off after uh, cutting all of the excess area around here. So now I'm ready to feather and blend around the bearing edge. This is the bearing edge. We want to make sure we don't damage it. So to feather and blend it, we're going to need two things, an eight inch mill bastard file and a machinist brass brush. And the way you do this is you go only in one direction and you work it like this slowly and you do this until um, the material here starts to peel off. I'll show you how I do this. Now it starts to clog up the file, so you want to make sure that you uh, have a brass brush to clean it with to get all that material out, so it'll just clog up the teeth. Now this is the seam, so it's going to take a little bit longer because it's double layered right in this area here. See how it's starting to come off? Okay, so as soon as it starts to look like that, I'm going to carefully peel it back. As you rub it with your finger, you can see that it's taking it off right along that edge there. And I'm going to do this for everywhere on the drum where this material comes up along the edge. It takes quite a while and it makes a mess, so I normally do this outside. Right now I'm doing it inside just to show you. And the easiest way to do it is to move this uh, plastic out of the way as you work. And then when I get around far enough, I put it back up and have it folded down here. So I'll do all that and I'll show you what happens next. Okay, so I finished feathering along the edge here. And so it's nice and smooth. I took my file, only went in one direction and removed just this material right along the bearing edge without damaging the bearing edge. And so I've done this for the whole drum on both both sides. So one last thing I'm going to do before I um, get ready to drill holes for mounting the hardware is I like to take some like 220 grit sandpaper and a sanding block and just kind of lightly go around where I've done all my work. You really kind of want to fold down this plastic so that it's out of the way. And you're going to just lightly go over it just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. You want to make sure the bearing edge is still really in good shape so that when the head's on it, it uh, fits properly. So just something like that. And I'll do that for both sides. And then I'll show you how to drill the holes. Um, I'm getting ready to drill now. And or I bought a set of Diablo Forstner drill bits. These are made in Austria. I got these actually on Amazon. You really want to get top quality Forstner drill bits because cheap bits just won't cut through the plastic and it'll rip it up. So where the um, Tom mounts on this Ludwig, this is a uh, one and three quarter inch bit and I'm going to end up putting a backing block behind it and drilling it using a side drill. I'll show you that in a few minutes. But this fits exactly because this is an American drum, American size. Where the uh, base feet go through, this is a three quarter inch Forstner. It's going to cut right into here. Again, we're going to back it up with a wood block. It takes two people, so can't really demonstrate it at this very second. And then uh, where the breather hole is on this Ludwig drum, this is an odd size. It's 13 30 seconds. I found this weird bit at uh, I think Lowe's and Home Depot both carry them. So that's going to drill through here again with a backing block. And then 
where the legs go through, there's um, some bolt holes here that have to be drilled through, and they're 1964 ths Again, I found these bits at Home Depot and Lowe's. And lastly, all of the lug um, holes on this drum are uh, one quarter inch, so I'll be backing them up with this. I used a, I have a brand new bit out of a, a nice drill index here. So I'll be drilling those next. I'll get my drill, I'll show you a little bit how to do it, and then I'll go ahead and do it and start mounting the hardware. Okay, I'm, I've got my uh, Makita drill out. I've had this for about 25 years, made in Japan. I keep emphasizing top quality tools because really great tools will last you not only a lifetime, but they'll make the job go so easy. Whereas when you buy cheap tools, they just really don't do the job. So we're gonna start out by drilling a couple of these just to show you how we back it up with the backing block and drill it with the drill. So again, this is a brand new one quarter inch drill bit and I'm gonna drill the holes for the, um, for the lugs here. And our video producer, Sam, is going to help us. He's the Sam of Sam HD Productions. So it's just that easy. Just go nice and slow. If you use a clean bit, it should just go nice like butter. So we're gonna do that all the way around the drum. We're gonna drill all the holes out, and when we get done, we'll show you how to mount the hardware next. At this point, I've finished drilling all of the holes, and I'm ready to remove these, this plastic cover. So you can see all the holes came out really nice. They're exact and precise. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this so we can start attaching the hardware. And as you'll see, if you've done it correctly, it'll look just fantastic including the seams. So I'm removing the plastic. Here on the seams, um, the lugs will go over this seam here and help protect it. So what I'm gonna do next is the TomTom -tom holder's here and the badge goes here. So I'm gonna show you how to mount the badge. At this point, I'm ready to install the badge. It's gonna go right here where the vent hole is. If you'll notice, we have the TomTom -tom holder here. And this is actually the side facing out on the drum. And the way you know that is where the legs go are here. So you know that this is the inside of the drum towards the pedal. So normally, I would install the badge like this because I think that's the way it would look good. Like if you were walking up to the drum set, you'd probably want the badge facing that way. Although some people may want it more like that. Anyway, it doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna put it on. I had to remove this badge originally. You do it by uh, either filing out the rivet or what I do is I normally squeeze the rivet down and pull it out. And when I do that, it does cause some damage around this area. And in this case, this is a Ludwig drum. And Ludwig, no matter how much you beg them, will not send you replacement badges, even if you offer to send the old ones back. Um, I guess they think their product is so valuable that um, the badges, people might put them on some other sets. Um, I honestly like Ludwig drums a lot, but um, I think their policy on that is kind of kind of weird and silly. So I'm gonna kind of stick this badge here and I can see that it doesn't fit flush so I'm gonna try to maybe bend it just a little bit so it kind of conforms to the curvature of the drum. It's soft aluminum and it's very easy to damage. I like the old ones in, in the old days which were brass. So it's gonna go on something like that. So what I want to do is make sure it's straight with the drum. So if I use a straight edge, I can pretty much eyeball it and get it straight. And I feel that's where it should be. So I'm gonna stick it there. I'm gonna look at it. Looks pretty good. So I have a brand new rivet I got from Precision Drum Company up in New York. 
I'm going to put that new rivet in there and push it all the way down and I have to flare out the inside of this rivet. Now Precision Drum Company makes this little small tool here which you can buy from them which helps do that flaring. So the way I use this tool is I take this part put it on the inside take the nylon washer which helps protect the badge in the steel washer, put all that on the outside, and I snug it up by hand till it's just kind of barely snug. And then what I do is I take a 3 16 inch Allen wrench and put it on the back side here. And my goal here is to hold that wrench to keep it from turning because I don't want the badge turning while I try to tighten it up. I take a small crescent and I fit it to this nut here. And I want to do two things. I want to push back so that the rivet is seated all the way against this badge as I turn this, which will flare out the rivet on the other side. So that's what I'm going to try to do is do both operations simultaneously. Just take your time. And if I look on the other side, I can see it's starting to flare out pretty, pretty good. Maybe just go a little further. I'll uh, remove this tool and have a look and see how it looks. And if you've done it right, it should look new. And it does. It looks really good. The backside is flared out exactly like it should. This is not loose because I pushed it in as I was tightening it up. So it came out just about perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is start mounting all the hardware. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I do want to mention that when I mount the hardware, I use um, low strength adhesive or Loctite. This is not Loctite brand. This is something I got from Japan. But it's very low strength and can be easily removed. But it also allows the parts not to vibrate loose. And I don't know what Ludwig's torque settings was on things like the lugs and the hardware. I just do it by hand. I do it by feel. So that's the way I'm going to do it.